morning we follow divine service setting three, the non-communion portion that begins on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near to the true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me and forgive my sins. We observe a moment of silence to reflect upon God's word and examine our hearts. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake, Grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for, the, and for his sake forgives us of all our sins. <coughs> to those who believe on his name, he gives the power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Please take in hand the worship insert sheet from your bulletin. There you will find the introit for this first Sunday in Lent. Let us read the introit together, responsibly, the congregation taking the indented lines. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him. And show him my salvation. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the most high. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you. To guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up. Lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. You are the lion and the serpent who will trample on your foot. We say together, Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him. And show him my salvation. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday of Lent comes from Deuteronomy chapter 26, beginning with verse 1. When you come into the land that the Lord your God has given you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it and lived in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God a wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. And there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then he cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the fruits of the fruit of the ground which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please turn over to the front side of the worship insert sheet toward the bottom. Let us speak responsibly and gradually. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle comes from Romans chapter 10, beginning with the second part of verse 8. <coughs> the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Be to God. Let us rise in honor of our Lord for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and he said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, 
If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us now confess our Christian faith as we together say in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. At this time, I would invite the children to come forward for the children's message. And I do not see any children here this morning, which often happens in the Sunday school and things. So, we will continue with our next. <coughs>
Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message today is John chapter 15, verses 12 to 17, where Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This I command you, to love one another. This is our God. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, a renowned theologian was spending an evening within the intimate circle of his friends. Anxious to know more about this great man's thinking, one of those present asked, what is the most profound thought that has ever entered your mind? After a brief moment of reflection, this great theologian replied very simply, the most profound thought I have ever known is the simple truth, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Now, to us sitting here this morning, that may not sound like a profound thought at all. If you're maybe thinking to yourself, why, that's a verse I learned when I was a beginner in Sunday school. Yeah, it's true. The glorious fact remains that no profounder thought has ever entered the heart of man than this. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Today, people across the world will be celebrating Valentine's Day, which is the holiday where we supposedly show our love to the special people in our life by giving them cards, flowers, candy, or gifts. It seems strange that we have to set aside a holiday <coughs> to say, I love you, but perhaps people feel that if they at least remember to tell their loved ones on Valentine's, it might make up for all the times they forget to tell them that during the rest of the year. Yet it is sort of significant, to me at least, that this year Valentine's Day falls on a Sunday, and not just any Sunday, but the first Sunday in Lent. What is the significance? Well, with all this talk about love going around on Valentine's, it's sad to think that a lot of people still don't realize who the source of true love is. True love comes not from brightly colored cards, or flowers, or candy, but it is found in Jesus Christ and his love for us. While today's world speaks of self-love, it is Christ and his sacrificial love that shows us what true love really is. And it also gives us the power to love in our hearts as well, to reach out in love to others. So as we examine this morning Christ's command to love one another, let us see that Christ's example of love is, in fact, the greatest valentine of all. Now, if you ask 10 different people, you will get 11 different definitions of love. Everyone talks about it. Everyone has their own definition about what love really is. Yet, perhaps, the best way to find out what love is would be first to look at what love isn't. For one thing, we know true love is not something that can be bought or sold. Of course, that runs counter to what many people in our world think, especially around Valentine's. We have been bombarded over the last few weeks with commercials that tell us, show her how much you love her by buying her this or that. And if you don't as yet have that significant other in your life, then buy this toothpaste or mouthwash or deodorant 
wear these clothes, drive this car, drink this beverage, and you will find love. Yet we all know that deep down inside, that isn't true. True love is not a commodity. It cannot be bought or sold. Also, we need to realize that true love is not merely a feeling. I heard one person describing something that sneaks up on you and hits you when you least expect it. How when you have it, there is nothing you can do. You can't eat, you can't work, you can't sleep. What I thought was a description of the Zika virus turned out to be, just it, one man's description of love. Love is more than just a feeling. If you wake up on a Monday morning and find that whatever special feelings just aren't there, does that mean that you're not in love? Of course not. Lust runs hot and cold, not love. True love is more than just a momentary feeling. And finally, it is also important to remember that true love is not self-centered. A lot of what passes for love today is really just self-love in disguise. I can remember back in high school reading the book Love Story with its famous line, love means never having to say you're sorry. I never quite bought that. That seems to be saying that if you love someone, it doesn't matter what you do to them, which sounds like the reason why a lot of marriages today are disintegrating. What really happens is that I am in love with myself, first and foremost. And when my spouse keeps me happy, then I'm in love. But when he or she doesn't fulfill my needs or wants or desires, then I think it's time to look for someone new. At the center is me. As long as it suits me, it's okay. But don't call on me to sacrifice for others. That's not what I signed up for. And in the end, this is not true love. It is self-love. So all in all, we've spoken of what true love isn't. It's not something bought or sold. It is not merely a feeling. It is not self-centered. But now let's look at what true love is by looking at the greatest example and the ultimate source of love, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus summed up his life's work in our text when he said, greater love has no one than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. What a startling thought and challenge that Christ places before us. I mean, most of us would be willing to die for our families. Perhaps some of us would be willing to die for our friends. But when I look at Jesus, I see how much deeper he was willing to go. How many of us today here would be willing to die for our enemies, for those who have hurt and abused us? And yet that is exactly what Jesus, our Savior, did. In love, Jesus sacrificed himself. As the Apostle John put it earlier, when Jesus knew his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were with him in the world, he loved them to the end. What does that mean, he loved them to the end? That end meant being convicted of a crime he didn't commit. That end meant being beaten, mocked, whipped, and spit upon. That meant, end meant having a cross dig into his back as he climbed the lonely hill. And that end meant hanging in agony on that cross and shedding his lifeblood until he died. Why? Why did he do this? Why did he willingly go to such a horrible death? Because he loved his own to the end. He did all of this out of love for us. A four-year-old sat in her accustomed pew in church, closely snuggled to her mother's side. The organ was playing the prelude, and the little girl's eyes were intent on the picture of Jesus on the front of her Sunday school leaflet. 
Finally, looking up into her mother's face and pointing to the picture of the Savior, she whispered with a joy that lit up her whole face, He loved me. Yes, the Savior loved that little girl. Even as He loves every one of us, each and every day. All that we need to know for time and eternity is summed up in the knowledge of that love. Does the world seem to hate you? Jesus loves you. Do you find the way hard, the path dark, the night lonely, the world friendless? Jesus loves you. Are you sometimes scared and frightened to think of what the future will bring? Jesus loves you now, and his love for you will never change. His love is everlasting. In Christ there is forgiveness from all of our sins. Christ died on the cross so that we might have the peace of knowing that the list of our offenses has been wiped out. The debts we owe have been paid in full. The punishment due for our crimes has been stamped in big red letters, forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. And yet, not only did Christ give himself as a sacrifice for our sin, but through faith in his resurrection, he also gives us the power to love others. We have the power today to love others. Notice Christ's command. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Wow. Talk about a tall order. How could we possibly love others the way that Jesus loved us? Well, by ourselves, we can't, of course. We are too much like the rest of the world. We don't want to love anyone but ourselves. We certainly don't want to forgive or to sacrifice for others. And yet it is by letting Christ live in us and through us that we find the power to love. We let Christ's blood wash away any hurt and resentment that we may be holding on to. Remembering how Jesus has forgiven us empowers us now to forgive others. Letting his healing love flow into our hearts changes us in a miraculous way. We want to reach out to others. We want to give of ourselves. We want others to know and experience a love that we ourselves have found in Jesus Christ. That's what true love is all about. As I said earlier, I find it significant that Valentine's Day this year falls on the first Sunday in Lent. What this, why this has special meaning is because the road to true love is the road that must run through Calvary. It is the road that leads us to Jesus and his death and resurrection. Because then it goes on to reach out in love to others, family, friends, even enemies. Loving one another then becomes the most important part of our lives. There is a legend about the Apostle John who wrote the words of our text. And this legend, while I can't be verified, is nevertheless very much in keeping with this character. It is said that during the final years he lived in the city of Ephesus, too old and too feeble to address a congregation with a formal sermon. He still was called upon each week to say a word to the worshipers at the close of every service. And so rising slowly, he would smile at the gathered group, and with a wavering voice, speak only one sentence. Little children love one another. And with that, he would slowly seat himself again. When one of his younger friends asked him one day why he always said the same thing, he replied, because there's nothing more to say. That is the final word. If we love one another, that is everything. And indeed, dear friends, that is everything. While Valentine's Day may be a day of empty, gushy sentiment and gifts, we rejoice because we know who the source of true love is. In Christ, we see the purest example of love, a love that went all the way to the cross for us. 
May we never forget his love, but instead today, on Valentine's Day and every day to follow, use the power he gives us to reach out and to love one another as he has loved us. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, may keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Especially Harley and Grace, 
Grant them strength and healing according to your good and gracious will for their lives. Enable them to trust in your goodness through this time of affliction. To find in you their source of peace and hope. Be with their family members during this time. Grant them an extra measure of faith and trust. Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth, the giver of life, we thank you for all the mercies that you granted to Martha Walker during her earthly life. Comfort her loved ones who mourn her death with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a happy reunion in heaven. Lead all of us, Lord, to remember that we are mortal and bless us with strong, abiding faith that will lead us through this life to our true homeland up above. All of these petitions, O oh Lord, we bring before you as we now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we continue with our next meeting.
Blessed Lord, you have written all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Otherwise, I was thinking too, is looking at the bulletin, not only is it things here in our church, but if you are a kind of person who knows the difference between a right and a left bower, a couple of Euclid tournaments coming up. That's kind of cool. I'm in a cold winter, uh, gather with other good German Lutherans and, and Trump people's aces. That's always a lot of fun. So, consider that as well. May the Lord fill you to overflowing with his love. So that on this first Sunday of Lent, on this Valentine's Day, and on every day yet to come, God's love flows through you.